Hi there, I picked up a slightly defect Thurlby Thunder 1905A bench multimeter from eBay. Its last calibration was apparently in April 2003, nearly 20 years ago. It's in very nice condition for its age and responds perfectly to those white buttons at the bottom, but not to touches of the membrane keyboard above. A quick test using a 5 volt reference source shows that the unit is working and also responds to range changes as it should. So there's definitely hope. The problem with the keyboard is easy to diagnose. That flat ribbon cable is definitely cracked and lost connectivity on at least some of the traces. This is really more like a flex PCB. Unfortunately, it's directly coming from the membrane switches of the keyboard. I mean, the other end is the keyboard itself. There's no connector in between. On closer inspection, there might be several cracks. The question is whether these can be patched. I saw some suggestions to use conductive paint and try getting that to seep into the cracks to reconnect the traces, but since that portion of the cable is bending when the cable is connected, I don't think such a repair would be lasting, if it worked at all. I opened the connector and the cable definitely looks in very bad shape higher up. Hard to tell further down, but hopefully that is still okay. With a heavy heart, I decided to cut the cable and try fitting a new connector on the rest. The cable has two distinct layers, one with eight traces and a large crack through at least five of them and another layer with three traces. That makes sense because according to the manual the keyboard is a 3 times 8 matrix. The connector punches through the cable with these metallic teeth to make contact. I noticed that the cable expands into wider pads where it goes into the connector. A new connector will of course have no wide pads to bite into, just the traces themselves. I used part of the cutoff cable for some experiments. I did not manage to expose the traces chemically or mechanically enough to make contact and the material can't be soldered, it melts immediately. Some extensive searching on the web revealed the exact type of connector except the new ones have 12 instead of 11 connections. That should not be a problem since the mating socket is just a row of pin headers. After trimming the cable to hopefully just intact traces, I fitted the new connector and aligned it with the traces. It turns out the connector is really hard to close to bite through the material. I used pliers but even that was not easy and I accidentally broke the little catch that keeps the connector closed. Since the cable is now too short to reach the board, I put some extensions in to get to the pin headers. And of course it doesn't work at all. Actually, even though the plastic top part does not really stay closed anymore, the part that does the connecting looks fine. If these traces can be accessed that way, it should have worked. But now that I took the front panel off, I also noticed a lot of cracks further down the cable. They are a bit tricky to see on camera. In fact, the cracks continue all the way where the cable disappears and becomes the keyboard. This thing is disintegrating and will never going to work again. I need a plan B. What are the options? Well, for a start, I could do nothing. The meter works, but only as a basic 4.5 digit meter and none of the advanced functions are accessible. I don't really like that idea. I considered replacing the front panel with a PCB and capacitive pads. I have done this before for my environment measurement station, but the chip for sensing the capacitive buttons returns results as I2C, while the 1905A processor sends CAN pulses on 8 wires and expect returns on 3 wires. Adding a small microcontroller could solve that, but it seems a lot of work. The advantage is that I may be able to reuse the original front panel print if I can separate it from the metal carrier and the keyboard membrane without damage. That would create a 1905A that from the outside looks and works just as the original. Some people suggest to drill holes and have small tactile switches on the back with long plungers through the holes. To leave most of the key labels intact, the plunger would have to be very small in diameter, which isn't very nice to operate. The placement would be very tricky because of the limited space behind the front panel, especially behind the bottom row of keys. There's no space for a PCB, so the switches would need to be hand-wired into a matrix. A lot of work for sure. 
or replace the front panel with a PCB and put tactile switches on them with a square keycap. I would have to design a new front panel printout for the lower part and attach labels on each keypad. A lot of fiddly work. Also, I don't really like replacing the front panel with a PCB because it removes some of the shielding and certainly the electrical protection that an earth metal front provides. It's also an issue for the touch sensor solution. Not shown is waiting for another broken 1905A on eBay and hope its keyboard works, but the keyboard problem is pretty common for these meters. Maybe you have other suggestions? Please leave them in the comments. For now I decided it would be best to park this and rig a temporary solution just so I can try out if these advanced functions really work and how important they are. For this I'm going to use two of these cheap 3x4 membrane keypads from eBay. But they are too wide to fit the mounting I have in mind so I need to find out how much I can safely trim them down without cutting any traces inside. I decided that as long as I leave 5mm of the pad on each side, I can trim the rest safely. For a cheap solution to mount the keypads, I selected a 2 gang Petrus box as used in the UK for mounting light switches and power outlets. You can get blanking plates for these and I'm going to put the two keypads side by side on one of these. The slits for the connectors are cut with a Dremel. They will be invisible later, so neatness isn't required. Peeling the protection off to glue the pads on reveal the circuit inside. I'm sure the keypads inside the 1905A look very similar. The pads are glued on top and the cables accessible from underneath. To make this as cheap as possible I use a lot of leftover stuff. These are the parts I selected. The left ones are for connecting to the meter a flat ribbon cable in between and the ones on the right to connect to the two keypads. The Petros box I'm going to use is also not new. The left corners are broken and held together with epoxy. I cut a slot for the flat ribbon cable and the two screws holding a strain relief for it. To get inside the meter I replaced the blanking plate for the remote control interface that this model doesn't have with a plate of the same shape cut from ABS. That new plate has a slot for the flat ribbon cable and a strain relief. After an hour of soldering I have my two boards. The left basically just routes the meter's 11 pins of the keyboard interface to the connector to the flat ribbon cable. The right one is more complicated. It splits the signal from the flat ribbon cable to the two keypads connectors. Not very pretty but that's not what I was aiming for. Let's quickly cover how the 1905A keyboard works. There are 8 column lines which are also connected to the 8 7 segment displays. As the displays are multiplexed, there is a signal appearing on each of these column lines, one column at a time. The processor is listening on the 3 row lines. When a key is pressed, the processor can determine which one it is based on which column line was active at the time and which row line returned that column signal. For example, if the multiplexing makes column 4 active, and the signal is detected on row line 10, the 5.5 digit key is pressed. Sadly, the manual doesn't provide the assignment of key names to row and columns. I had to use trial and error to establish this schematic. Of note, the processor can obviously detect 4 additional key positions that are not used. I tested these and they only produce an error message. No secret undocumented functions, unfortunately. The temporary keypad simply plugs into the connector for the non-working keyboard. The ribbon cable exits the meter at the rear and ends in the adapter for the two keypads. Time for a first test. Pressing the 2 on the left keypad should be detected as the 5.5 digit button. And success! The meter switches to 5.5 digits. With this established I can hide that contraption in the Petrus box. I know I'm getting fancy now, but I couldn't resist to make a front sheet for my replacement keypad. The black keys are those four unassigned positions in the matrix. Putting double sided tape around the sides of the keypads to hold my front cover. This is how it looks now. Everything works as it should. I can switch to 5.5 digit mode. And also the secret trick of switching it to 6.5 digit mode works just as with the real keyboard. This gives me a chance to explore the meter and see if it's worth spending more time on it. 
but this is for part 2 of the video, so stay tuned for an update. If you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe. And it would be great if you could decide becoming a Patreon, that would really help this channel. The link is in the description. As a Patreon you always get early access to videos, blogs and other exclusive content. Thanks for watching.